This is going to be a video about reading your Bible in the year 2020. And if you've never read the Bible through, it's one of the greatest things you can do. So I'm just going to show you a few verses about reading your Bible. And in Deuteronomy 17, 18 through 19, it says, And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. So if you're looking for a verse to show a daily Bible reading plan, right here it is. It says, and he shall read therein all the days of his life. And this causes you to fear the Lord your God. And this, this is one of the greatest things you can do, is to get in the Word of God, read it, study it every day. You know, a reading schedule or goal for each day, five chapters in the old, five chapters in the new. If that's the least you can do, it's just very doable, and that will put you through the Old Testament twice and your New Testament seven times. And just all throughout the Bible, you see you know, things about actually reading the Word of God. And another place is in John 8.31. If you want to look there, it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So a big part of being a disciple, a big part of discipleship is continuing in the word. And then... In Joshua, all the way back in the book of Joshua, in Joshua 1.8, it says, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So, a good way to be prosperous and have good success is to get in the book not send your money to TV preachers. They'll say, that that's how you're going to prosper. No, getting in the book and reading it every day is how you're going to prosper and be a good success. And it may not be according to the world's standards, but it will be to God's standards. And then one of my favorite verses on Bible reading in it is in Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Isaiah 34, 16 plainly says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Uh, that's one of my favorite verses on Bible reading. Seek ye out the book of the Lord. I remember when I first got saved and I found out which Bible was right. I uh, wanted to know which Bible I should use and I came across a website, I believe it was on the Jesus is Savior website, that sh showed to me that the King James was the right Bible and all the other ones were just perversions and just immediately I knew just from that article the truth opened my eyes but from then on I fell in love with the King James Bible and if you want to look at Psalms 119 in Psalms 119 it has some of the greatest verses about reading the Bible and I'm not going to read the whole chapter but just point out some of the key verses that I like wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word so especially when you first get saved you got all these pet sins that are plaguing your life you know how to get rid of those is replace all those hobbies with bible reading bible studying memorizing the bible meditating in the bible you see you know a lot of preachers will get up and tell you to stop doing a certain sin but they don't give you something to replace that sin with and that's where the Bible comes in. Replace all those sins with the Bible. With reading, make reading the Bible your hobby. And that's how you're going to learn it very quickly, is if you spend most of your time doing that. Then look at verse 11. It says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. There's you a good verse about why you need to memorize Scripture. And, you know, every day I'll write down Scripture on a piece of paper. I'll print it out. And I'll take it to work with me and I'll pull it out of my pocket all throughout the day and try to memorize as many verses as I can. I'll get an audio Bible, listen to it over and over again. Try, I try to memorize so many verses a week. 
And then when you don't have the Bible with you, for whatever reason that may be, you've got it in your heart, and that'll help you during times of temptation. It'll help you endure temptation. And next, verse 15 hits, says, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. So you need to ju not just read it and memorize it, but meditate on it. When you're reading it, think, what can I get out of this for me? How can this help me in my everyday life? And then down in verses 71, it says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Now, we need to learn the Bible. We need to learn as much of the Bible as we can every day. Learn something new. Learn something new out of the Word of God. Get you a study Bible. Get you a commentary. Let some men guide you as Philip guided the Ethiopian eunuch in the chariot there. You know, it's biblical to have a person guide you in the scriptures. Just make sure that, you know, he's using the right Bible and he's got the right gospel. And then Psalms 119 verse 99 is another good one. It says, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. So, David here is saying, since he's been studying the Bible, reading the Bible, that he understands more than his teachers, and he knows more than people from days gone by, and if you just got out your Bible today, started reading it, and really got into it and studied it for like a year, you're going to know more than most preachers know because they just don't study the Bible anymore. So that can be a good motivation to you. Learn as much as you can. I mean, you're going to understand more than the ancients. You're going to know more about life than the smartest people on earth right now because the smartest people on earth right now, most of them, don't even believe the Bible. You know, smart people when it comes to worldly standards, people with PhDs and the politicians, the presidents and kings and rulers of this world, they have no idea about eternity. They don't know what life's all about. But you're going to know more than them and you know, you're going to know more than people from days gone by just because they never spent time in the Bible. And then another good verse that I like to go to is Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. So if you want to look with me there in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8, it says, So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. That's another one of my favorite verses about reading the Bible. Once again, showing you that it's okay to get understanding from someone else. It's okay to listen to a man make sense of a verse for you and have your eyes opened up to that verse. And that's where it's good to listen to Bible preaching because a preacher can get up and say something about a verse and it just puts a, a light bulb goes off in your head and you'll look at that verse differently than you ever have. It just makes you understand it. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So we need to try to understand as much as we can of the Bible. We're not going to understand all of it, but don't let that stop you from reading the Bible. Just keep reading it over and over even if you don't understand it. Keep reading it even if you can't pronounce all the names. And there's a lot of names that people struggle with. Just read them anyway. It's kind of like working out. You know, the more you work out, the easier it gets. The more you read the Bible, the easier it will be. I remember when I first started reading the Bible, I could just read like maybe five chapters years ago, and now I can read, you know, 30, 40 chapters, depending on, you know, how long the chapters are. And it depends on your schedule, too, you know. I understand some people can't read numerous amounts of the Bible. Their job doesn't allow them to to read that as, as much as another person's job and things like that. 
but everybody can read a little bit. Just 15 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day will help you get through the Bible in a year. And then in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, 1 Peter 2, 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. That's how you grow as a Christian, is by the sincere milk of the word. The more you read it, the more you're going to grow. And if you don't read it, you're not going to grow. And then in 2 Peter 3, 18, here's another great verse, which says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do you know how you're going to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ more? Is reading about Him in His book. And the reason that people think that the Jesus of Hollywood is the real Jesus is because they don't know the real Jesus because they've not read about Him. The best way to never be tricked by what the Bible calls another Jesus is by finding out who the real Jesus is. And the Jesus Christ of the Bible is a lot different than Hollywood portrays him, a lot different than Netflix portrays him. And if you want to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then get in the King James Bible, open it up and read it with an honest heart, an open mind, a sincere heart, and be a genuine Bible believer. And then Jeremiah 23.18 is another one of my favorite verses on this subject Jeremiah 23 18 says for who hath stand and stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word who hath marked his word and heard it so I like to get a, a wide margin Bible my main Bible is a common man's reference Bible it's a wide margin Bible and I like to get my micron pens and my highlighters and mark up my Bible. I like to underline stuff. I like to have something next to every verse. So if I'm asked a question on that verse and I can't remember the answer, I've got it right there in front of me, right next to the verse. You know, you want to fill your Bible up with as much stuff as you can. If you're a man, the Bible is like your toolkit. If you're a woman, it's like your jewelry box. You want to open it up and just have all your, your gadgets there right there in front of you with the Bible and your notes right there with it. So it's one of the best things that I recommend for you to do if you want to read the Bible and study the Bible is get a wide margin Bible. And you, can, you can't hardly buy those in stores, but you can get them online on places like churchbiblepublishers.com and uh, you can go to purewordsoftruth.com and get a common man's reference Bible. What I believe is the best Bible that you can get. It's just got so many references, so many notes, but it also has pl plenty of room for you to make your own notes. And that, I just highly recommend getting a wide margin Bible and not just reading it, but also marking it up. And it just makes a connection with you and the Bible when you do that. And then in Hosea 4 6, that's another verse that I like to mention when I talk about this subject but it says people are destroyed for lack of knowledge the reason that Christians make so many bad mistakes or the reason that Christians just are backslidden go down the wrong road it's because they're not growing in grace and in the knowledge of a Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the reason they're deceived by false prophets and getting all kinds of false doctrine is mostly because they're not reading the Bible and you could get off into false doctrine while reading the Bible if you're just not letting the Holy Spirit guide you and you're letting a man guide you. But still, you, if you get in the Bible, the more knowledge you're going to have about the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word, the less likely that you're going to be deceived. And then, you just if you read in the Gospels, you're going to see one of Jesus' favorite sayings that he always said like here in Matthew 12 3 look at what he says but he said unto them have ye not read that's one of Jesus's favorite sayings imagine getting to the judgment seat of Christ and Jesus was like 
Have you not read? Why didn't you read my word? It was there easily accessed. Free on the laptop. Free on the iPhone. Free when you go to the doctor's office and it's right there on the table. Free at church right in front of you and the pew right in front of you. But you don't even pick it up and read it. I mean, the Bible is free everywhere. The King James is not copywritten. You can make copies of it yourself and give it out. And that's one of Jesus' favorite sayings is, Have you not read? Just type in that phrase, Have you not read? Have you not read what David did? Or have you not read in the law? Have you not read that he which made them, at the beginning, made them male and female? They obviously haven't read that today because people don't know if they're male and female. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read? Have you not read this scripture? It's funny, Jesus didn't have the originals, yet he called what he had scripture and wanted you to read it. And obviously he read it himself because that's what he used when he was tempted of the devil. And then it says, as touching the dead that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses? And Jesus answering them said, Have you not read so much as this? Have you not even read this? You know, have you not read the Bible? Are you not consistently reading the Bible every day? You know, just consume more and more Bible, the better off you're going to be. Replace your sinful habits with Bible reading, Bible study, Bible memorization, meditating on the Bible. Get some type of ministry involving the Bible. And you're just going to be better off overall in your life. Get up an hour or two early in the morning. Start reading your Bible. Read it throughout the day on your breaks if you can. And that is a way to be a witness to the lost world. You bring your Bible into work and just look at the people's faces when they walk in and see you reading the Bible. And it's just one of the most effective ways to witness at work. Other than, you know not when when you're not just outright telling them the gospel but if you want a good conversation starter to get the gospel out you know i've done that many times they'll start talking to me about the bible i'll say well when did you get saved and if they say i've not been saved you know i'll take them to first corinthians 15 1 through 4 and say well here's the gospel and what must you do to be saved is believe on the lord jesus christ as your crucified buried and risen savior and I've had a, a lot of people, you know, say that they've been saved by me be showing that. And, you know, God knows their heart if they did or not. I've had a lot of people say, well, that inspires me to read my Bible. You've inspired me to start acting like a Christian again just by me having my Bible out and open in the workplace or at the store or anywhere where I've actually had the Bible. You know, I'm not against Bible apps on the phone. But the only thing wrong with the Bible apps on your phone is everybody just thinks you're on Facebook and they don't realize that you're actually reading the Bible many times. Sometimes they might if they're over your shoulder, but I think it's good if you get a little New Testament or get you one of those small little compact Bibles, take those to work, work with you and just let everybody see you reading your Bible. And this is something great that you can do in the year 2020.